On the news tonight, Finance Minister declares the air on suspension of petrol subsidy removal, says petrol subsidy removal still valid. Nigeria Air Force pledges more air power in securing the country's territorial integrity. And Senate moves to give legal backing to 46 year old Atomic Energy Commission. A warm welcome to News Now. I am Mary Kanu. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, says the federal government has no plans of suspending the removal of petrol subsidy. The banking rumours making the rounds that the National Economic Council agreed to ultimately suspend the removal of petrol subsidy. The minister in a statement on Friday said the government has no such plans. Instead, it intends to expand the subsidy removal committee to include teams from the incoming administration and the state governors. The finance minister said the NEC deliberated on the issue extensively and came to the conclusion the subsidy must be removed as it is not sustainable, adding that the 2023 fiscal framework and Appropriation Act as well as the Petroleum Industry Act have made the provision that the government should exit petrol subsidy by June 2023. And the controversial announcement by the federal government to suspend the removal of petrol subsidy until June has been met with varying reactions from different quarters. Speaking on the development on TV360 Nigeria's flagship program, DG360, the chief executive officer of the Center for Promotion of Private Enterprise, Muta Yusuf, said some form of consultation should have commenced between the transition team of the incoming government and stakeholders on the matter before the announcement was made while warning that the National Economic Council should avoid making policy pronouncements they may create problems that may create problems for the new administration. Yusuf said all matters relating to petrol subsidy removal should be left to the incoming government. But what I think should happen, I, a whole lot of issues should happen simultaneously. First, there should be a timetable or a work plan to do a phased removal of the subsidy. Secondly, there has to be a combination or a mix of policies, fiscal and monetary policy, to ensure that there is, you know, uh, a cushioning of the effect, you know, of the subsidy removal. Third, there has to be a mix of policies to ensure a transition or to reduce the demand for PMS and reduce the demand for diesel. And this we can do by quickly accelerating a process of, you know, encouraging the citizens to move from the use of PMS or diesel to the use of gas. Some vehicles are now converting to CNG. We have institutions now who are using, they no longer use the diesel generator, they are using CNG. We have a lot more gas in terms of reserve than even crude oil. So this is, a, this is an opportunity to optimize the use of gas. So whatever policies we can put in place to ensure that there is this gradual shift from the use of PMS, diesel, to the use of gas through the CNG, that is also a possibility. Then we have to also accelerate whatever we can do to improve the power supply. Because the power supply improves, the need for this PMS and diesel, the, the demand for them will reduce. The 59th anniversary celebration of the Nigeria Air Force is scheduled to hold from May 4th to 7th, 2023 at the NAF base MNA in Enugu State. The chairman of the NAF 2023 Celebration Organizing Committee, Air Commodore Chukwe Do Ilo, disclosed this during a press briefing in Abuja to herald the NAF Day 2023. With a day themed doctrinal imperative for successful Nigerian Air Force operations, Air Commodore Ilo said the NAF contributions in the areas of internal security, humanitarian and peacekeeping operations, as well as restoration and sustenance of democracy on the African continent, deserve celebration. I would like to acknowledge the excellent cordial relationship between the Nigerian Air Force and the media over the years as stakeholders in our collective drive at addressing the security challenges 
facing our beloved country. This is not only rewarding with the Nigerian Air Force, but the entire nation as it enables us to unify and strengthen our common bonds, as well as to harness our diversity to fight the common enemy. The Nigerian Air Force will be commemorating its 59 years of existence. There is no doubt that the service has grown over the years into a formidable and respected force within the African continent and beyond. Pursuant to its mandate of securing the territorial integrity of our dear nation through the application of air power, the service is also determined to ensure a peaceful and progressive country which guarantees that citizens are provided with the necessary conditions for the pursuit of their daily lives. It is pertinent to note that the Nigerian Air Force has also made appreciable progress and significant contributions in the areas of internal security, humanitarian assistance and peacekeeping operations, as well as in the restoration and sustenance of democracy on the African continent. It is only rational, therefore, to celebrate its existence as well as the laudable achievements recorded over the years. The Senate Committee on Science and Technology has conducted a public hearing on the obsolete Nigeria Atomic Energy Commission Act, which came into existence 46 years ago. The bill was dissected by stakeholders who attended the public hearing, saying there is a need to amend the existing acts to redefine the responsibilities of regulators from operators. In her opening speech, the chairman of the Senate Committee on Science and Technology and the outgoing senatorial representative of Anambra Central Senatorial District, Uche Ekunife, emphasized the need to amend the bill, stressing that the provisions of the act have grossly become inadequate for energy activities activities in Nigeria. This bill further aimed at harnessing domestic talents and the de development of indigenous capacity in science, technology and innovation for the promotion and technological innovation needed to drive national competitiveness, productivity and economic activities which will invariably enhance the achievement of the nation's development goal across all sectors of the economy. The repeal also intends to make Nigeria Atomic Energy Commission to be able to achieve the following. Number one, to develop the ways and technical machinery to effectively explore, exploit, and harness atomic energy of peaceful applications and for sustainable national development. The B6 to repeal the Act, the Eastern Act, and enact the Nigeria Atomic Energy Act of 2022 to, among other things, streamline its provisions to cater for robust implementation of the National Nuclear Energy Program in line with acceptable international standards and in compliance with Nigeria's obligations under relevant international legal instruments. The decision to embark on a nuclear program in Nigeria represents a long-time commitment to safety and requires national and organizational infrastructure. That is not a debatable aspect. Uh, the lack of requisite legal framework is another challenge and has greatly slowed down our activities as a commission to be able to uh, harness the potentials of atomic energy in a peaceful manner, both for power and non-power aspects. Uh, in line with international accepted best practice and the accordance with IEA requirements uh, should address strictly aspect of promotion development and utilization of nuclear energy application for peaceful purposes for technological development in Nigeria. A non-governmental organization, Save the Children, has called on the federal government and stakeholders to accelerate actions toward reducing and ending the under-5 mortality rate of children from vaccine-preventable diseases. The advocacy campaign and policy manager, Save the Children International, Ifat Shuku Innocent, made the call at a roundtable dialogue session with immunization stakeholders in Abuja. Innocent lamented that immunization coverage in Nigeria is below the global vaccine action plan goes, adding that only 36% of children aged 12 to 23 months received all recommended vaccines and urged all stakeholders to continue to build strong political commitment for increased immunization coverage and other primary health care interventions. 
The message we have is that uh, families, we have messages at different levels. For the families, they should do everything possible to present their children for immunization. And then for government, it's for them to be able to um, ensure that the funding is available, the logistics and challenges are sorted out, um, the coaching challenges are sorted out, uh, and that the health workers are properly trained to administer all of these vaccines. Concerning the um, funding for the health system, the national health insurance system should be strengthened so that they will be able to capture the community health insurance system. That is when we can be able to see the benefit of um, um, health insurance system because money will be made available to the facilities. The facilities will be functional. They will be able to get everything in terms of the skills, in terms of the resources, in terms of the equipment and commodities for them to be able to function with. There must be sustainable funding for research and development. You know, so we need much more research, we need much create enabling environment for the pharmaceutical companies to begin to do this. We have more than 100 pharmaceutical companies in Nigeria. Vaccination itself, once a child is vaccinated, the child has a, a better opportunity to survive in terms of, especially against the agents that has been, the child has been immunized against them. So it's very important that we get it right in terms of funding vaccination and this is very very critical because we need to make sure that we ring fence the money for vaccination because it saves lives you know and one of the things we need to do is to make sure that whatever we budget for vaccination is released Irregular migration of Nigerians abroad has assumed a worrisome dimension in recent times and as a safeguard in action to stop adolescents from being victims of trafficking and irregular migration, parents have been called upon to be sensitive to their children and words and also become mandatory reporters in the communities to curb the trend of irregular migration. The call was made by stakeholders at an event tagged Project iPhone put together by the Nigerian Women Association Verona in conjunction with Patriotic Citizens Initiative. This next report has more details. I fainted in Sarah Desert. I fainted, well, the time I fainted was around that kind of 10 in the morning. When I woke up, it was like around 9 in the night. Stories like this form the essence of guardians of this nature and the need for awareness creation on the ills of irregular migration. The need for awareness creation cannot be overemphasized, hence the guardian of parents and guardians at this event, organized by the Nigerian Women Association Verona, all in concerted efforts to check the growing trend of irregular migration. If you are in Nigeria, put a whole lot of hard work, you will get better. If you are in Europe, you have to do a legal job, but we all know that our children that are going there, they are involved in their prostitution due to, because that's the only way those people think that they can make fast money for them. We are only talking of Nigerian citizens, Nigerian youths, be they male or female, yeah, we need to protect them. We are talking of protection and safeguarding, there is no sex. Calling for attitudinal change, the executive director of Patriotic Citizens Initiative says the economic hardship faced by many results in the need for migration. I was interviewing a returnee yesterday at the centre in, um, in uh, Holland. It was on virtual interview. And he was asking me, he said, the money they want to give to him is not enough. It's not, uh, it's not, it's not up to the money he used in travelling to Europe. So why are they asking him to come back? And he has spent over 10 years. And for God's sake, at this, at this, at, they did not invite you to Europe. You left because you are seeking for greener pastures. And you are not giving, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, documents. And they said, okay, if you want to go back to your country, go back. But we will support you to start up a life with this amount. And I was telling him, I said, half bread is better than not. Come back to your country and start up with this. But the truth is, a lot of them want to be given millions because they, have, they feel that when they give them millions, that is the only way they can survive. Speaking of the event, other returnees say continuous awareness creation helps potential migrants make better decisions. A lot of persons are reaching out to me that are, ah, because thank you for your story, your story has really taught me how to migrate the right way and not the irregular route again. So I'm not doing it for gain, I'm doing it for passion, for people to really see the dangers of this regular migration and what is happening in Libya, in quotes and unquote, that these things are just to deceive people you know, of their normal right for them to travel. 
Over 10,000 Nigerians have died since 2017 while illegally migrating to Europe through the Mediterranean Sea and the deserts. And as a result, organizers of this event say more enlightenment and sensitization needs to be carried out for the vulnerable on the dangers of irregular migration. Mary Kanu, TV360, Lagos. And the federal government has declared Monday, May the 1st, as public holiday to mark this year's Workers' Day celebration. The Minister of Interior, Rauf Eric Beshala, made the declaration on behalf of the federal government. Eric Beshala commended workers for their hard work, diligence and sacrifice, adding that their efforts are largely responsible for the greatness of a country and the respect Nigeria now commands in the Committee of Nations. The minister also urged workers to raise the bar of their trade in line with the President Muhammad Buhari-led administration's drive to upgrade the vehicle of governance and make all the people of Nigeria derive maximum benefit from the nation. Now we'll take a break here, but still to come, 12 killed as Russian strikes hits Ukraine. Details of the story and more when we return. Join us. Thank you for staying with us. Here's a recap of our top stories tonight. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, says the federal government has no plans of suspending the removal of petrol subsidy. The banking report making the rounds that the National Economic Council agreed to ultimately suspend the removal of petrol subsidy. The minister in a statement on Friday said the government has no such plans. Instead, it intends to expand the subsidy removal committee to include teams from the incoming administration and the state governments. We also told you that the 59th anniversary celebration of the Nigeria Air Force is scheduled to hold from May 4th to 7th at the North Base MNA in Enugu State. With the date themed doctrinal imperative for successful Nigerian Air Force operations, the chairman of the NAF 2023 Celebration Organizing Committee, Air Commodore Chukwe Do Ilo, said the NAF contributions in the areas of internal security, humanitarian and peacekeeping operations, as well as restoration and sustenance of democracy on the African continent, deserve celebration. Well, in case you missed any of the news bulletin or for more updates, you can catch us on Line Maxwell TV or log on to our website on www.tv360 nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at TV360 Nigeria. On Facebook, we're at TV360 Online. And India continues to witness a declining trend in the fresh COVID-19 cases being reported in the country. According to Union Health Ministry data on Friday, India logged 7,533 fresh coronavirus infections, while the active cases have decreased to 53,852. The active cases now comprise 0.12% of the total infections, while the national COVID-19 recovery rate has been recorded at 98.6%. Well, take a short break and be back with more stories. Do stay with us. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How, in practical terms, can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? President must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, 
the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa forest. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts, and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians are saying in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues. Welcome back. It's now time for business news. Here's Simisola Adigun. Thank you very much, Mary. Welcome to business news. The Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, has declared as baseless the alleged illegal sale of 48 million barrels of crude oil exports in 2015 to China, currently being probed by a House ad hoc committee. The Attorney General and Minister of Justice made this disclosure in Abuja while appearing before the House Ad Hoc Committee investigating the alleged loss of over $2.4 billion in revenue, including crude oil exports from 2014 till date. Our correspondent, Mary Kanu, now reports. In December 2022, the House of Representatives resolved to probe the alleged missing barrels of crude oil allegedly sold in China by some Nigerian officials. The resolution followed a motion made by member of the House, Ibrahim Isiaka, who claimed in his motion that the tip was provided by a whistleblower. The ad hoc committee sent out several invitations to the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, which was shunned by him, prompting the committee to issue a seven-day ultimatum for him to appear. Finally, Malami appears before the ad hoc committee for the investigative hearing and while reacting to the sales of the crude oil, said President Muhammad Buhari got the news of the alleged missing oil in 2016 and set up a committee to investigate the matter. Mr. Chairman, sometimes in 2016, allegations were arrived and hyped in the social media. There were allegations of existence of stolen 48 million barrels of Nigerian crude oil in China, said to have been valued at 2.4 billion. The president, President Mahmoud Buhari, informally requested the Attorney General, making reference to my humble person, Mele Kiari, former DGSS, Lawal Daura, and late Abba Kiari, to look into it and advise. But unfortunately, Mr. Chairman, for there to be a reasonable ground for suspicion, at least you require certain basic facts. The committee also raised concerns on why stolen funds recovered were deposited in an asset recovery account instead of the Federation account as stipulated by law. You repeated several that all the recoveries, even the ones you made by yourself, were deposited to asset recovery account because we are assuming on this part, before we conclude, we still want a guide from you, that part of what is causing this misinformation is because we, maybe the process or the procedure, we have been contravening them. If you have, for example, a revenue being maintained, dedicated to asset recovery for the purpose of transparency and accountability of it, at the end of the day, the money that goes into the asset recovery account find its way to which account? To the account being referred to under section 162, which indeed the federation account. 
Despite requests from the lawmakers, Malami also declines to provide the committee with the case file on the prosecution of the suspects in the fraud case and following disagreement on the issue, the committee resolved that the AGF should reappear next week. Mary Kanu, TV 360, Nigeria. We'll take a short break now and return with a review of the stock market. Stay with us. It's been four days of positive trading in the week on the local boards. Nigerian equities closed in the positive region on Friday, strengthening its gains further despite inflation risks. Uh, with uh, the 0.32% increase, market indices show that all share index also increased by 52,403 basis points, leaving market capitalization on the 28 trillion naira mark. Now, market breadth, however, closed negative with 24 gainers against 27 losers. From 106 listed equities emerged top gainers, Cadbury Nigeria and Fidelity Bank PLC, both recording 9.76% and 9.04% increases, respectively. Now, at the end of the last weekday of trading on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, a total of 472 million volume of shares, corresponding to a market value of 4 billion naira, were traded in 5,569 deals. Now, for our select global stocks, all three shifted from mixed earnings on previous trading day to all-round profit taken on Friday amid mixed data and strong corporate earnings. Well, that's it on the stock market. Mary, back to you. Thank you so much for the update, Simisola. Now on the global scene, Russian strikes have battered cities across Ukraine on Friday, killing at least 12 people in a barrage of missiles and drones that hit as Kyiv prepares an expected counter-offensive. The deadly attack included a strike on a residential building and came days after the leaders of Ukraine and China spoke by phone with Chinese President Xi Jinping reportedly advocating peace negotiations. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has condemned the latest barrage and has vowed a response to the Russian terror. Well, up next is Entertainment Report. The men's club is back for its fourth season, but this time on Prime Videos. The show, popularly known as TMC, was created by Urban Vision and released in October 2018 on Red TV YouTube channel. Since then, it has had three seasons with some holiday special editions. After five years of delivering compelling stories and cultivating a strong following of viewers on YouTube, the web series is switching things up and adding instead to the streaming platform. This move has been met with a wave of backlash from fans of the show online. With season 4 set to debut soon, it's still unclear how the series will be received. Jerry Springer, one of the most influential and controversial figures in TV history, has died from cancer at age 79. London Bond Springer was best known for his long-running reality talk show, The Jerry Springer Show, which he invited guests to reveal their often embarrassing details about their lives for the delight of his audience. For 27 years, from 1991 to 2018, the star presented The Jerry Springer Show. He was also known for hosting America Got Talent from 2007 to 2008, and more recently, George Jerry. In the late 1990s, the show topped the daytime television rating in the U.S. before ending its run in 2018. That's it on the entertainment segment of News Now.
And now in sports, Rivers United have landed in Tanzania ahead of the CAF Confederation Cup quarter-final second leg encounter against young Africans of Tanzania. The Bride of Rivers touched down at the International Airport Dar es Salaam on Friday morning and are looking forward to overturn the 2 0 deficit from the first leg. The encounter will take place at the Benjamin and Kapa Stadium Dar es Salaam on Sunday. And that's a package. Thank you for watching. I am Mary Kanu.